Okay, nurses. This is Kevin with nursingcamp.com, and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. Today's focus is on cardiac lecture number 25, angina, two types, stable and variant. In the previous lecture, I talked about this sticky note found on nursingcamp.com um, that covers angina classifications. And what is angina? Well, it's chest pain, and it's because the result of uh, blood flow has been stopped and the cardiac muscle is being starved of oxygen. So we have chest pain. Well, chest pain is further described as um, different types. So there's stable angina, there's unstable angina, unstable angina, and variant angina. In the previous lecture, I talked about stable angina. Now, stable angina is um, generally relieved with nitrates. So you take nitro sublingually, you know, Q5 minutes apart, and you put it under your tongue. See my nitrate lecture where I talk about that. But generally, the rule of thumb is with stable angina, they stop what they're doing. If they're running or walking or doing an activity, when they stop, the pain should go away. Or if they take nitrates, the pain goes away. That is stable angina. However, stable angina can become a myocardial infarction. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when it, all these can become unstable. And to pave the way to the MI, this is the A portion, arteries. We're talking about the arteries and perfusion to the cardiac muscle. All right, so stable angina is a repeatable um, chest pain that it usually happens um, with activity or uh, the same thing and it is relieved by nitrates or rest. The next one I'm going to talk about is variant angina. Now variant angina is also called Prinz metal. Now Prinz metal, I always think of a metal symbol. Okay, that's supposed to be a symbol, whatever. And that symbol, or flying saucer, that symbol vibrates. And that's kind of what's going on in, um, in the vessels. So what happens is, and we talked about this in coronary artery disease, where with um, certain types of like arterial sclerosis, there's no stretch. So it can't really vasodilate. And the reason it can't vasodilate is because these striations and these uh, cholesterol buildups in the vessels. So they become hardened. And when a person is moving um, as an exercise, the vessels want to vasodilate. So they're normally like this and they want to vasodilate. Well, with variant angina and transmetal, um, they can't stretch. So they cause chest pain. But what's specific about Prince metal is it's basically vasospasms. So the, the coronary arteries are basically a spasm. Um, what's another difference about it is at nighttime. So as the body's relaxing at nighttime and they are sleeping, um, they wake up with chest pain. There's no activity. They're just sleeping. And it has to do with the relaxation in the vessels are trying to relax and they start to spasm. And think of like restless leg syndrome. And what happens is, is that it's, they just, they set to spasm and then the heart doesn't get perfusion because of these spasms. And they kind of, um, what happens is they'll wake up with this chest pain. And that's significant for Prinz metal. So what do we do for these patients? Well. The same thing of um, coronary artery disease and angina, stable angina, they're going to go through the same process. So the presentation is generally, hey, I, was I was sleeping and I was waking up in chest pain. I, I woke up, I rested, and chest pain went away. So I need to be evaluated. So they'll put them on a, a treadmill and they'll try to elicit the same symptoms. And whether they have chest pain or not, they'll monitor for uh, ST depressions. They'll put them on a monitor, ECG, lead two, and they're gonna to try to elicit the same symptoms, okay?
but usually significant for Prince Metal is sleeping. But they'll still get a stress test, and then they'll also get a, um, a go to a cath lab where they're going to evaluate the coronary arteries. And then they're gonna, and we talked about that in the previous one, previous lecture, where we talked about it goes either in the femoral, this guy's an amputee, okay. Um, and they put a catheter and it goes up into the heart. And when it goes up into the heart, it goes down into the vessels. And on those vessels, they are looking. Right? They can look for coronary artery disease. They might put a stent in. They might do some angioplasty where they put a balloon in and they push against the cholesterol on the sides of the walls. And if it's gooey and stuff like that, it's not quite built, they push against it. Or they'll do an atherectomy where they actually cut and shave the uh, arterial sclerosis, the hardening, and then these pieces break off and then they take them out. Um, what's another thing about uh, variant? Well, variant could, sh could become unstable. And just like with stable angina, it could become unstable angina. Uh, they could be symptomatic. Um, they could be sweating, uh, diaphoretic. So it could look like uh, an MI. But, you know, these come first, generally, before somebody has unstable angina. Though somebody can have unstable angina, then that's called a myocardial infarction. And we'll cover that um, in the lecture after, in the lecture number 27. Uh, they have shortness of breath. Um, we're going to put them on a monitor and evaluate them. So let's kind of go through it. All right, so um, ACE, ACE sleeps, right? So is it acute or chronic variant angina? Well, it is um, chronic, but it can become acute, can become unstable. Um, how does it start? Well, it's usually because of, um, you know, uh, vessel disease, cardiovascular disease labs. Uh, we might do uh, some variant uh, labs, like some uh, troponin, some cardiac enzymes. I'll be covering that with MI. Um, does it affect their eating? They might get a little nauseous. Um, what else? Assessment. Well, what we said this is that we're going to look at the history. We're going to do a chorea angiography, where we thread a, uh, a uh, path through their heart to see their vessels to look at what's going on they might get angioplasty angio balloon so the assessment is they present with chest pain but usually at nighttime with variant um, what's a P prescription they can take nitrates but the interesting thing about these patients because they're at night and they're sleeping at night so a lot of times these patients um, you can't wake up give them nitro because nitro is kind of acute it, it, it works it's a short half-life right so what they'll do is they'll give something like emdur which is a nitrate but emdur emdur is chronic over time I saw by it um, which lasts longer, it's got a longer half-life because you can't control the person when they're sleeping. So we put them on MDR so that they don't wake up in the middle of the night in chest pain. What's some problems? Well, they could have an MI. They go for procedures like a cabbage or a cath. And what stands out? Mainly that variant angina is at nighttime. They sleep, it's a spasm in of the arteries. Um, they get on MDR and um, it's generally relieved by nitro or endur. So it's the same thing as stable angina. It's predictable. However, they both can become MIs. So always be aware of that. And that's our next lecture where we talk about uh, unstable angina. Well, my name is Kevin and this is Nursing Camp and I can be found on uh, Instagram, um, Facebook, uh, Pinterest, uh, Google, Etsy, and uh, Twitter or nursingcamp.com. That's about it. Now nurse on.